Austria from Oakland, California. I'm a consulting tiger and lion trainer, and I've also worked as a network tiger analyst for ABC and other local and nationwide broadcasts throughout the country. I have also worked with leopards, jaguars, birds of prey, coyotes, wolves, and bears. I'm also a former Daly City police officer, and I'm currently a music industry professional. One of the things that tigers do in order to greet each other is a sound called a chuff, and it sounds like this. I was walking a female tiger. Her name was Jai. She was right about 275 pounds, and we were walking here in the mountains in Oregon. And a lot of times, one of the things that tigers do is to pretend to be friendly to give you a false sense of security. So what she was doing is chuffing, but every time she chuffed, she'd rub up against me and then glare at me and give me this look. And I have known that look for years. It's a look of aggression. So she chuffed. She gave me that look. I knew kind of what she was thinking. So I backed up. She walked about six feet ahead of me, and she waited until she was on the uphill and I was on the downhill. At that point, she turned around, and in a split second, she jumped and lunged in my face, roared, showed her three-inch canines, and started taking swipes at my face. Now, the other trainer who was with her actually hit her on the head with a wooden stick, and that distracted her for a minute because these tigers are trained. They know they're not supposed to bite and scratch. So what she did is at that point is she backed up to a tree and went behind some cover. And that's one of the things tigers do when they're acting aggressive and they're stalking you. So she was pretty pissed off at this point. And she was staring at me. I could see those eyes dilating. And that's what happens when tigers get aggressive. Luckily, I decided at that point to pull out her favorite training reward which was a bottle of low-fat milk. As soon as I showed her the milk, Jai carefully walked up, left her cover, and approached me and started lapping up the milk. I was bleeding profusely from my face, but she was enjoying her milk. So, inevitably, it all worked out. I ended up getting 14 stitches in my face, but I am still here to live to tell the story. And that milk has a special meaning to me. Milk did save my life. In working with tigers and lions, I have been bitten, scratched, dragged, held underwater, knocked down, and have dealt with them in many different experiences and in different situations where my life was threatened. And I felt like I was really able to deal with those circumstances very calmly and very confidently. And working as a police officer in the street, I also had to deal in many dangerous situations and I learned to work comfortably and confidently within those different parameters. One of my passions really is talking about wild animals and educating the public about endangered species and one of the aspects of our situation now with global warming and habitat destruction, many of these beautiful animals such as lions and the big cats are dwindling at a very rapid rate and what I would like to do is really educate the public and to be able to talk about these animals and also express the wonderment that we all experience in being close to them. Well, tigers are excellent hunters, but they are successful one out of 20 times. They are solitary, so they don't hunt in groups such as lions. Now, tigers are really not natural man-eating animals. But there are situations, especially in India, where there's unfortunate contact between tigers and humans. There is a specific area located in South Bengal, and it's called the Sundarbans. And it's a heavy populated mangrove forest, and there's a lot of tigers there. And sometimes tigers, being the excellent swimmers that they are, will actually swim into a river and grab fishermen out of their boat and eat them for dinner. One of the things that I did at Six Flags Marine World when I worked there was swim with the tigers and play with them in the water. And this was something that we did regularly with them. Tigers are great swimmers, uh, a lot better swimmers than we are. They actually have web feet and that helps in propelling themselves through the water. So in one situation I was playing with two Siberian tigers and I was dragging a toy and instead of going for the toy, the two tigers went after me and treated me as a toy. How did you get so, out of it? 
Well, one of them held me underwater, and I felt myself struggling, and this was four feet of water, but I managed to pull myself up and hold this youngster by the neck. But as I was distracted trying to hold her by the neck, another Siberian tiger approached from behind and knocked me flat on my face again. And now I had two tigers on top of me and was underwater for about 30 seconds, and that definitely was the longest 30 seconds of my life, especially considering both of these catch, cats weighed 200 pounds. I eventually got assistance from another trainer who was able to call the cats off of me. Tigers really have a great sense of hearing and a lot of people think they have a great sense of smell but their olfactory senses are really not as developed as a dog for example. So the two senses that are the greatest for the tiger really is their eyesight and also their sense of hearing and it's very important for them to be able to hear prey animals to be able to hear, especially during the nighttime, different animals that could be a potential dinner, for example. My initial experience with wild animals was as a falconer. I trained and hunted with hawks and other birds of prey in the field. I then worked in controlled environments at San Francisco Zoo and Marine World in Vallejo. And during that time, I worked with a host of different wild animals in captive bred situations. How willing am I to get close to wild animals in the field? Well, considering the fact that I've actually wrapped my hand around a male tiger's penis and inserted it into a female tiger's vagina, <laughs> I think I'm willing to get pretty close and pretty personal. This is a Bengal tiger. She's a female. And from the looks of it, she looks right around 250 pounds or so. How long are they? Tigers are really the largest cats in the world. They can get up to about 13 to 14 feet long. And the Siberian tiger is the largest cat in the world, and males can get up to about 600 pounds. These Bengal tigers are right around 275 to 300 pounds for a female, and also 450, maybe 500 pounds for an adult male. The craziest and also the bravest thing that I've ever done with wild animals occurred in 1998. And I was doing a photo with a 280 pound Bengal tiger, and unfortunately during that photo, this tiger jumped on top of the park guest, pinned her down, and grabbed her with his claws. But it was at that time that guests were allowed to pose with the big cats, correct? Yes, at that time guests were allowed to pose with the big cats, and we had trained the tigers particularly to be comfortable with photo shoots and movie shoots. When Kuma jumped on top of the woman, he grabbed her, and I had to jump on top of his back and pull him off, wrestle him off, with the assistance of the other trainers. Luckily she did survive the incident and Kuma is still there to this day.